I, I want us to go to the, it's not going to be a very long, you know, I'm not that short. I've got a, oh, by the way, I can see the hubs. <laughs> uh, the hubs. Uh, good morning, the hubs. Good morning, my pastor. <laughs> Uh, we, we call each other Ndangam. Sometimes he, he says to me, I'm Dala, I'm Dala, you're too old <laughs> to be my peer. Uh, if you can go to, and to everybody else, good morning very much. Uh, if you can, can go to the book of John, chapter 17, we'll read from verse 6. If you can stand for the reading of the word. Verse 6. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them. And have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed. I'm going to repeat that one. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. And all mine are yours. And yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. Now, I am no longer in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me. That they be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you. And these things I speak in the world. That they may have joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them. Because they are not of the world. Underline that one as well. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. But that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Underline that one as well. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for those alone. Uh -huh, here we come in. Now I was praying for the disciples, those that were walking with him. But now he says, I do not pray for those alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you have given me May I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I 
think I'm going to end there. Father, in the name of Jesus, this day was chosen by you. We did not choose it. The fact that you are here today is because of your grace, because of your love, because of your care. And Father, as I stand here today, I know that I'm just a vessel to speak your truth, to speak your word, to speak your message. I draw myself back now, Holy Spirit, and that you take over. Because this mouth becomes now your mouthpiece. And I pray, Lord, that you, you will sanctify each and every heart at this particular moment. That no distraction will take anyone away from hearing what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. You may sit down. It was a, quite a read. A read which depicted or depicts the love of Christ even before we were here. Which depicts the vision that he had about us even before we were here. It depicts the fact that God does not work in a stumbling and say, oops, oh, I've, I, I should have done this. God does not work like that. The fact that you are here today and hearing these words is not by chance. Because if you believe that God is God, then today, God is speaking to ears that were supposed to hear him today. So as we sit today here, it becomes important to realize that the word of God, the word of God will never fade. The word of God is everlasting. The word of God can never be defeated, can never be changed. Because God is God. And what he speaks, he speaks through the authority of being God. And what he speaks through, he speaks with the integrity of being God. So when God speaks, that's why it, the Bible says that God cannot speak a lie because God is not a liar. So when God makes a promise, be sure that that promise will come through. When God says this is going to be, it does not matter whether it, take one, it takes one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, 11 years. It does not matter because it shall come through. Because sometimes because we don't calculate the time as God does, we see the time in our perspective. Whilst God does not see any delay. Because God is God. One day to one year to do, three years or whatever, to God is like a day. So God is not bothered basically by the fact that it is delaying to you. Because to God, because the, the, the message that he put through to you is a message of truth, then it means that to God, there's no delay in, 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 in making sure that it happens. Because with God, 
The time for God is not like our time. So today, if you are sitting here today, and there is a promise that God made to you, and you know that God spoke, be assured that it shall come through. Abraham gets a promise. And Abraham, as the promise is given to him, he waits for years and years up until the promise is fulfilled. And you know what Abraham does? Abram fumbles along the way. He goes to countries, he goes to, to a land, he sees Canaan, he says, ah, no, he, there's, a, there's fair man, he goes to Egypt, when he gets to Egypt, he lies, when he gets, to, he lies about his wife, and then he comes back again, you know, but then Abraham, who was told, by the way, that you leave your country, he t takes along a guy like Lot, you know, Lot also causes a couple of problems on the way. Because Lot also, you know, has his issues. Because Lot was never given the promise. He was never given the promise. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because Christ speaks to the Father. And there's a couple of things that Christ speaks to the Father about. Before he leaves, he makes sure that the gospel does not suffer in my absence. He makes sure that if I leave now, I am sure that whoever is left behind, Father, equip them so that they can spread the same truth that you gave to me. I'm so glad. Don't worry that you are quiet. Né? I am also not worried because it means that it's sinking in. You are listening. Now, what does Christ do? When you look at, at, at John chapter 17, you can see how Christ now is passing the baton. He passes the baton to the, to the disciples. And he says, Father, I know this world. That I'm, I've been here. I know what is happening here. I know the afflictions that they're going to go through. The hatred, I know. I know that they're going to struggle. I know that the enemy is going to, to be against, uh, against them. I know that they are going to be suffering under the hand of those who don't want me and you as the Father. Because they'll be preaching the same message that I'm preaching now. Because whatever they are going to say is the same that you say to me. So when they say this, they, they, they are going to face a lot of challenges and attacks. So he says, but I can't, I can't live here without having brought them before you so that they can be prepared and be equipped and be cap capacitated. So Christ, as he passes the baton, in athletics, when you pass the baton, it means that this one takes over from you and probably at the start runs faster than you ran because now you got tired on the way of, getting, of giving him the baton. So Christ gives the baton to the disciples. And before he does that, he prepares the ground so that when they get the baton, they are equipped. So that's the first thing that Christ does. The second thing that you know, that you note there is that they are separated from the world. I wish the church can be separated from the world. You know? I so much wish that, you know, as we walk as the children of God, you can see this one is different. 
through my talk, this one is different. Through my walk, this one is different. Through my thinking, this one is, di is different. I wish we can get to that stage as the church where we, we can see, the world can see, but they are separated from us. We've got into what I call a booby trap. Big booby trap. Where you can't separate now. You know, when we talk in our circles, uh, I speak I speak like this one. I speak like the world. You know, my, my language is the same. There is no difference in my language with the language of the world. We have become the same. Uh, but you know, the beauty of it is that Christ also prays that as much as they are not of the world, but they are in the world. In being separated from the world, we still have a responsibility towards the world. Ish. We have become so, so slack and we have become so uh, sleeping, you know, that we, as the world is rocking, as, 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 as the things are happening in the world, there is strife, there is, we are rocking along, rocking along, rocking along, rocking along, asleep as if nothing is happening. When I say this, don't think I'm not included, ne? Unless you say, Aish. well, the minister, uh, I wish I was like him. We are all the same. Because this is a message from God to wake us up. So Christ says, you know what? I know they are going to stay in this world but still equip them because they are not of this world. The third thing in Christ's prayer he says that we are sent in the world I think it's Verse 17, if I'm not mistaken. We are sent into the world to proclaim. Yeah, you can, you can, you can, uh, uh, I think that's verse 17. We can, we should proclaim the truth. Where is the truth? Where does it, who, who, who can tell the world the truth except for us? Because if we don't speak this truth, you know what's going to happen? The world is going to become worse. So one of the things, sanctify them by your truth, Christ said, because your word is truth. And now this word that we have been given, this word here, Okay, it's on my phone, but it's in here, in your Bibles as well. This word is the truth. You know, I once went, went to a, a funeral of, uh, the, uh, what do they call this church now? Maybe I should not mention it, but where they held a full funeral, you know, traditional funeral speaking all the things or the truths of the traditional people. So I was I was it was family so I was supposed to to do the thanks. So I went up and I did the thanks uh, and then afterwards hey, I was lambasted right, left and center by these people. 
and they just uh, tore Christianity, you know. You can imagine in that situation where they taught Christianity, these people without, don't even know who, 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 who brought the Bible and the Bible was brought by, by the whites and blah, blah, blah. You know that kind of language. Eh? Blah, blah, blah. They don't, who, who are the ancestors of Jesus? Who, you know, and so forth and so forth. I was sitting there. It didn't even bother me much because I knew the truth. I was not shaken. Because I know the truth. So when the truth has sanctified you, irrespective of circumstances that you find yourself in, but you will hold on to that truth. And the challenge for us today is, what do we do? What is our responsibility as the children of God who have been prayed for by the master. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I told you it's not going to be a long. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. From verse 20, I think, to verse 22. Now, here comes our responsibility. We've been prayed for by Christ. But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor gain again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Now underline weaker. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it. But our presentable parts have no need, no sorry, that there should be no schism in the body, that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Now please remember, beloved, we are now united as the body of Christ. And as we are united, I think we know that scripture, as we are united by the body of Christ, you know what God has done through the Holy Spirit? He has given each and every one the capacity to spread the gospel. Each and every one of us has been gifted. Because we've got a responsibility that Christ prayed for. That when he leaves, we take the baton and we run with it. A big challenge for us. Some prophets, some teachers, I think you can go to that scripture on your own. You know that scripture, ne? Who does not know that scripture? By the way, I was a teacher before. Now, I may ask you, stand up. Give me the answer. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> joking. Can you imagine? Um, 
can you just, I, I, I wrote a quote one day. If the gifts were not there. You see, as we are the body of Christ, we are not all eyes. That's why Paul speaks about the honorable parts. Because sometimes we want to, to do the honorable, you know, those that we think are honorable, they are recognized, they are visible. We're not like David said sometimes when he says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house as long as I'm there. As long as I am there and I am of, of value in whatever I do. He himself gave, gave to some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers. And, 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 and God in his wisdom has, has made us all unique. And in our uniqueness, the expectation is, you know, I can trust this one with this particular gift because then he can run with it. Because not everybody, you see a car. Imagine a car, there was no battery. Some of us are just batteries in a bonnet. Let alone... Sometimes when I, when I think about this, let alone being a starter. Imagine that car, <laughs> imagine that car won't start unless that starter is working. Some of us are just ignition keys. You know, or the ignition slots there that, you know, that need to be turned. Otherwise, the body does not work. Sometimes we look at ourselves and say, we say to ourselves, you know what, I am, I am not really ready. God must do something to make me ready. That will never happen. Because when God gives a word, he says to Abraham, eh, dot, go Go to a country. I don't think even Abraham knew which country he was going to. But God gave him an instruction and gave him the, 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 the commission. Stand up, go to a country that I will. And God does not even say that um, it is this country. But then he says that I will show you. So when Abraham walks, can you imagine? He just walks. You know, depending on God, where God is going to show him where he is going. And sometimes this generation wants to see first before it can do. We want to see. God, if you don't come through for me, uh-uh. We want to see first. Once God is saying, I don't know you guys, but... I have, I have had the, the, the privilege of the Holy Spirit teaching me things that I never knew I would be able to do. Just by being obedient. Guys, do you know that this one I'm whispering now so that the enemy can, can't hear? Do you know that when you submit to the will of God, I'm not loud, ne? Do you know that when you are not, when you submit to the, to the voice of God and to the Holy Spirit, He teaches you even the stuff at your work. He guides you. You fumble less. You wake up in the morning and you pray, Father, I can't do that thing. Hey, the manager is... You know, I've been trying to get hold of these people and these people can't now for, for at, at my work. I would sit even at, at home, wake up in the morning. Lord, now my prayer is a very straightforward prayer with God. I don't, when I'm alone with God, maybe amongst you, I will, I will, I will pray like, you know. The, but when I'm alone with God, I become very me. 
And I tell him, yo, I can't do that thing. Please help me. Lord, um, I've been trying to get hold. You know, is this, I've been trying to get hold of this person, but this person just, I don't know where they disappeared to. Can't you locate them for me? Or give me a way of how I deal with this now because hey, I'm going to be in trouble. Uh, this is a pulpit, man. Without any fail, in the morning, I get an email from the person that I, I've prayed for. Or a call. Just make an example now. On how you, you create that relationship with God so that in the simplicity of whatever you are faced with, you can know that you can trust God. You don't want to trust God for big monies. You can't even trust God, Jay, for, 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 for a phone call. God, can you do me this? Can, and God is looking at us and saying, not saying you now, us. Ne? They say, hey man, this one, I, he can't he ask me for such big stuff, but yet he can't trust me for for, 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 for healing of the flu. Praying for someone for flu. You know, because we never, because we want to be perfect first, which is not going to happen. Because we have to, when we walk with God, we walk with God in obedience. And when we start walking in obedience, then God starts teaching us along the way. And as we fumble, we know, oh, I made a mistake here. And then we know, I will never do that again. Abraham, coming back to him, I'm almost done. Abraham, what he does is that as he walks, he goes all the way. He goes to Haram, and I think he goes to Canaan, and then he goes, oops, to Egypt. And he comes back again, and I think he ended up in Bethel. And then that's where the issue was between him and Lot. And when they have this issue, he said, look, we need to part now. You go in your own way, I go my own way. But then he says to him, you choose where you want to go. Because Abraham had heard God's voice speaking to him about the promise. Can we get to that point as I close? Am I not too fast for you? Are you glad that you are uh, finishing early? <laughs> Got this right. Can we get to that point as the children of God? Where we know that we have a responsibility towards the fulfillment of the gospel. I'm going to challenge you now. Why is it, because I'm a very practical person unfortunately, why is it that it becomes a struggle for us to even attend our cell meetings. I'm being practical now. don't want to speak in the sky. Why does it become a struggle to even come to prayer meetings? Why is it a struggle that even we even have time on our own to pray? Why is it a struggle? that it becomes even a problem to read God's word and to meditate upon it. Christ said, we are not of this world. And he acknowledged that we are in this world, but there is still an expectation from us. If we don't Get equipped and spread the gospel. Who is going to do that? Angels are not going to come here and, and do it for us. Now in the house of God, this is where I'm ending. In the house of God, God has granted each and every one of us with gifts. Everyone has been gifted with a gift. So you can imagine 
if there was no other preacher in this church, an example, just an example, that the bishop could trust, you know what was going to happen? Every time he was away, Rai Rai, what's going to happen? Either hire someone, or if you can't find anyone that he trusts, close the doors. No church for that Sunday. Because there is no one available. I wish we can look into ourselves and see in ourselves where, Lord, I know that I have been slacking. Because when we stop slacking, this church is going to grow. But if we slack, we'll remain the same clique because we're going to become a clique of a couple of people that come together on Sundays and leave each other and come back again on another Sunday. Do you feel challenged? Now at this point, I need a bigger response. Do we feel challenged? Let's populate this place even during the weeks. Let's populate ourselves. I'm that kind of a person there. Eh? Uh, during cell meetings. Let our excuses not supersede. Because it's very, it's very easy to have a reason not to come. Some didn't come today because there was a reason. Maybe when they looked out, uh, uh, it's too a bit cold today. We don't know. So I pray to God today. The last scripture, I'm just going to read this one. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. I therefore beseech, sorry, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk, to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. With all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Who is above all and through all and in Last one, I'm going to read this one, last one. But to each one of us. Now God did not leave us like. To each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So we have no excuse. It is just that the gift is lying dormant there. It's lying dormant. And... Uh, I'm sleeping, you know, uh, the car does not want to start. <laughs> the car does not want to start because the one who ignites it uh, does not start the car. We have the capacity. May God help us. May God help each and every single one of us. You know, when we come to God and say, Lord, I repent. I really repent. Because I know that, you know, 
Now today I know that I, I really don't have an excuse because you have provided me with the gift. You have gifted me. You have, you have capacitated me. I am covered. I don't have any excuse, Lord. Yes, I've made excuses. And be honest with God, Lord, I just made excuses left, right, and center. I know that I should have done it, but I did not. I know, Lord, that I should have, I should have shaken it off, but I did not. I know, Lord, that I should have, I should have stood firm against the enemy and, and resisted him, but I did not. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But sometimes we, 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 we enjoy the, this, you know, this excuse life and, you know, and we don't cut out of our step and say, but devil, you are a liar because Christ gave me the capacity. Where we as the church nowadays, you know, we, we are too comfortable we are too comfortable with the things that are happening around us. You know, we, we don't even when, when someone, and I speak about all of us, you know, we don't when someone is sick, decide, hey, let me go and knock at the door and ask, how are you doing? Can I pray for you? We, we, we become so, so, so encapsulated by the, the ideas of this world, by, by, by the thinking of this world, that today we, we think that like the world does. Eish. May God help us. May God shake off. May God shake off. May God, may, may we, in fact, may we shake off and say, Lord God, help me, Holy Spirit. I will do it even if I don't know how, but I will do it because I trust in you, because you are the capacity giver. Because there's the biggest mistake that we can make is. To, to, to think that this is my this is my capabilities that's the biggest mistake because you can never be capable without the Holy Spirit may God help us ah, may God help us the world is in full destruction is in auto mode and the church is sleeping We are asleep. When someone dies, hey, they have died. When someone is sick, hey, they are sick, Shen. We, 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 don't, we, we don't take that, you know, we, we don't take that responsibility. May God help us. You know, sometimes you don't even need to pray for the person. You just need to speak the word of God. You speak the word of God and that person gets healed in the name of Jesus. You, you speak the truth because the truth is sanctified and through that sanctification your words are sanctified and they strike through that person and the person gets healed without a laying on of hands. May God help us.